Hey, what's up, guys? Um, I just felt like strongly that I should make this video, so I hope that you guys actually listen and uh, that you learn something. It's so important for us to really know God. Like, the weight of that is like humongous in our life because without knowing who God is, there's no possible way for us to know who we are or why we were created or why we're here. And when I say we need to know God, I mean like we all have somebody or have had somebody that we know. Like, you know that you know them, you know the things that they say, you know the things that they like, you know them. Like, we got to get past like this laziness of allowing ourselves to settle for who we think God is and it's time to actually introduce ourselves and to actually like go seek him like past him being creator and past him being alpha and omega or judge or father like really like immersing yourself in a journey of really finding out like who are you God like because without it nothing makes sense is once we know God and who he is then we're able to understand who we are the two coincide there's no yin without the yang there's no who you are without knowing who he is nothing makes sense without knowing who God is you cannot possibly know who you are or why you're created without God it would be like a car waking up one day trying to explore its functions and never knowing its purpose the car could never tell itself why it was made it would need to find whoever created it to tell it like you were made to transport you were made to drive and the same with us like we understand some of our functions but it's beyond us why we were created what is our purpose you're more than this minuscule being who is happy and sad and has kids and turns up and sometimes is really frustrated and doesn't have an appetite for all that the world throws on your plate like you are a child of God like God made you for a purpose like there was something that needed to be done in the world he made you for it like fingerprints every single one is different we are like you are so special to God like I don't care what anybody says about you. I don't care what you've done. I don't care what your past is. Like, I don't care what your self-esteem says about you. Like, you are a child of God. That makes you priceless. Like, this world couldn't even fathom your worth. We can't even fathom our worth. Okay, I want to do something right quick, and I hope this helps. Um, we're going to imagine that this is a $100 bill, okay? It's 100 bucks. If there were five people in this room... And I said, hey, who wants this? All five will probably raise their hands. And if I go like this, and then I go, who wants it now? Everybody would still want it. If I said, who wants it now? People would still want it. It doesn't matter what I did to the, if I... If I say, who wants it now? Somebody will still take it. Because regardless of what I do to this, if I spit on it, it doesn't lose its value. And it's the same thing for us as children of God. Like, no matter what life is taking you through, no matter what road you've taken, no matter what you've done in your past, what lifestyle you've lived, what the secret or the truth of your heart is, like, that has nothing to do with your value you retain your value so without us understanding who God is there's no way for us to understand who we are without understanding who we are we would never ever be able to fathom why the devil hates us so much like the devil absolutely hates your guts like I don't care who you are like the devil hates you like he has it out for you like you wonder why you go through so much, why there's so much, like, just always coming. It's the devil. He does not like us because we're children of God. Like, if we had no ties to God, the devil would never mess with you ever again. It's not you that he hates. It's the God inside of you. Like, the Bible teaches us, like, the same power that raised Jesus Christ off the cross 
lives inside of you. Like, the devil hates God, and God is inside of you, regardless of what you do with your body, regardless of the lies that the media and the world has made you to believe that you're like, you don't mean anything, you're worthless, you have God in you. You are powerful beyond belief. Like, stop listening to the lies. Like, you are a little piece of God walking around on this earth. And that's why the devil hates you. He'll do anything in his power to destroy you. And he's so sneaky and crafty. Like, the Bible teaches us, like, that he's like a lion seeking who he can devour. Like, the devil been watching all of us since day one. Like, I know what makes her laugh. I know what makes her cry. I know what turns him on. I know how to destroy him. The Bible teaches us that all power on heaven and earth has been given to Jesus. All power. Not some, not halfway, not between the hours of 9 to 5. All power belongs to Jesus. Which means the devil has zero power. And the only way that he can stop us and get us to hell with him or get us kicked out of heaven is to distract us. To completely derail us from the promises of God and from our inheritance. That's why he tries so hard why are you being fought why have you been fought since you were a little girl or a little boy why are the all like the distractions all the lust all the perversion it is all a mass plan to keep you off track so once you know who god is then you can realize who you are then you can understand why the devil is fighting you you are in a war the devil is fighting you once you realize that you can take the initiative to fight back. In Ephesians 6, it teaches you how to fight back. God gives you a whole armor. It's called the armor of God. In Ephesians 6, if you go read it, it will teach you how to train your mind, how to protect your mind, how to protect your heart. It teaches you how to walk. It teaches you how to talk. In the Bible, it says, um, also in Ephesians, that we don't fight against flesh and blood. But we fight against demons and princes of darkness in high places in a spiritual realm. Believe me. Even if you have a hard time believing as a belief, just try to make believe that what I'm saying is true. Which it is. We don't, the Bible says we don't fight against each other, okay? Like, even though homegirl is irking you, you don't fight against her. It's really demons who have watched you and they know what irritates you and they use her as a device to irritate you like once you get out of this earthly mindset like you're so much better off because you understand who the enemy is so once we can understand who the enemy is we can understand how to fight him and this bible is full of so many stories that have taught me how the devil works it has taught me how cunning he is like how crafty he is like i'm able to go back to my old relationships and realize why some things hurt me so bad and how I hurt people so bad by being used by the devil. So once you understand who God is, then you understand who you are. This is a long process. It's a lot to understand. It's, I still have this much knowledge about who I am. But it's a lot more knowledge than I've ever had before. Once you understand who God is, then you can understand who you are. You can understand why the devil hates you so much. You can understand how to fight him. And once you can understand how to fight him, then you can win. Then all the battles of life are going to get so much easier to win. You're going to find yourself fighting and winning so many more battles once you learn how to fight. Like, And this right here is your sword. Ephesians 6, when he's teaching about the armor of God, it says, And take up your sword, which is the word of God. In Hebrews, it says, uh, The word of God is a sword, and it's sharper than any uh, double-edged sword, and it penetrates through the physical realm and into the spiritual realm. Like, man, we out here fighting, and a lot of y'all ain't picked up y'all sword not once. Y'all out here fighting everybody else, like, Pick up your sword. Like, stop. Stop losing. Like, I don't care. I don't care how winning you are in the club. I don't care how many women you got that make you feel like you're winning. I don't care how much money you got that makes you feel like you're winning. You're not winning without reading this, without picking this up, without... You can't know God without his word. Like, this is where it starts. Pick it up. Somebody. Somewhere. Like, 
anywhere. I don't care if you're in Ohio, Indiana, Arkansas, Arizona, South Dakota, Africa. I hope this video makes it to Europe. Like, pick up your Bible and start to fight back. Like, this ain't no Matrix or no Call of Duty we're in. Like, this is real. Like, this is so real. This is so much more real than you could ever imagine. Like, and it all starts with God. And the Bible, like, the Bible says if you take one step, he'll take two steps. Like, draw unto God and he'll draw unto you. Like, I was a filthy sinner. I was sick. I was... Anything that you could possibly do wrong, I've done. I've lied. I've stolen. I've robbed. I've cheated. I've had sex. I've done a lot of things that I'm not proud of. I've hurt people who never deserve to be hurt. I've been broken. I've done so much. I've lived so many different kind of lifestyles. But it doesn't matter. God will take you back. And like this, you don't lose your value based off of what you did wrong. God said, repent. Come to him. Say you're sorry. I don't care what people think about you. If they're going to hate, let them hate. If they say, oh, so-and-so can't be saved because of this and this is what they did, it doesn't matter. I'm here to tell you that God forgives and it doesn't matter who you've been. Like, shake the dust off your feet and get to going towards God. Like, be about that life. Like, I'm so tired of of the lies of the destruction i'm so tired of us losing battles we should be winning i'm so tired of people that i love like losing when we should be winning y'all and it all starts with knowing god so i really hope and i pray for my family for my friends for my instagram friends people that i've seen on social media and i feel like i know you because i've been watching y'all for years like y'all pick up y'all bible and stop playing i'm um actually recording something that i'm in a send of works it'll be out in the next few days it's called the word of god and it's going to be maybe uh less than 10 minutes just teaching about why it's so important to read your bible so tune into it thanks for watching please subscribe uh follow me on instagram snapchat if you want but my snapchat is not lit for real um subscribe on youtube at purdy so p-e-r-d-y-s-o-u-l uh, Instagram, Purdy So, P E R D Y S O U L. And I hope to see you guys soon. And I hope you learn from this. And I hope you guys truly understand that the genesis of all of this is knowing God. That's where it all starts. And this is how you do it. You pick up your Bible. Like, when I was out here woozy and wretched, like, it was this. I picked this up one day and I read Proverbs and it completely messed me up. Like, Day after day, I read it and it messed me up. I um, I was dating this girl. She was my high school sweetheart, and I had been dating her for um, almost four years. And I picked up my Bible and I started reading it. I knew that it was wrong to date women. My family didn't like it, and I just rebelled. I didn't care. I was so crazy about this girl. I moved her to a whole nother state with me. And um, and one day I started reading my Bible, and suddenly I had a conscience about my relationship with her, which had never happened before. We would go to church, we would get on our knees and pray, like, but when I picked up my Bible, something in my heart stood up and tapped me on the shoulder and was like, Sierra, you know that you know that you know in your heart of hearts. That you're going to have to answer for this. And I kept reading it. And I kept reading it. And I broke up with her. Literally. Literally one of the hardest things I've ever did in my life. And I was on this like. This swing back and forth where I would. Run after God and then I would sink with the, but like back into that same lifestyle, into that sin, and every relationship that I would ever get in, the word of God that I've been faithful to put in me would stand up and tap me on the shoulder and echo, and God started sending me dreams, and it's the word of God is so powerful. It's not some ancient book. This, it's like, 
it's alive, it's active, it's real, it's God. It says in John, and in the beginning was God, and the Word of God, and the Word was God. I think that's John 1.14, and the Word was God. Man, this thing is so lit, since y'all like lit, lit, big lit, go read it. And I hope this helps somebody. I really do. I love y'all. Please go find God. Please go find God. Please go find God. I love y'all. Like, subscribe. Tell me how you feel about this. Hey, look, I really was done. I I, was, I thought I was done, but God said, no, nah, I'm not done. Um, I literally just heard God say this. Um, and I... So I'm listening. Some of y'all need to repent. Like, some of y'all have never repented. Some of y'all haven't repented in a long time. And y'all have covered a lot of ground in sin since then. Like, you need to repent. Say you're sorry. And mean it from the bottom of your heart. And don't just acknowledge that you did something wrong. Don't just confess that you did something wrong. Acknowledge, confess, and turn away and stop doing it. That's repentance. Like, I believe I'm... I'm crazy enough to believe, like, somebody's going to repent. Like, somebody's going to get their wings. Like, somebody's going to be washed, like, white as snow. Like, repent. Like, lay down tonight in your bed by yourself in the dark and whisper in your heart, God, I'm so sorry for that thing that I did, God. I'm so sorry for that lie that I told, God. I'm so sorry for this life that I live, God. I'm so sorry that I'm addicted to money, God. I'm sorry I love this fast life, God. Take it out of me, God. I'm sorry that I'm addicted to to liquor or to, to sex or to, God, clean me, God. Take it out. God is faithful. He is more faithful than any of us could ever be on our best day. God is faithful. And I literally, when I turned this off, I thought I was done. I heard God say, Tell them to repent. Some of y'all really need to repent. Like, the Bible teaches us number your days. Nobody knows when their last day is. Like, I wish I had it on with me. I have a shoebox full of 16 obituaries from people who have died from middle school up until I was 25. I'm only 26. You never know when it's lights out. They are not worth looking God. Nothing is worth looking God in the face and being like, you weren't worth it.